In 1985, uh, you founded Comic Relief. H how did that start for you? What was the impetus? It was a, it was a coincidental thing. There must have been an instinct inside me, but I was at dinner with a, some friends, and a person at the dinner said that they were going to Ethiopia and Sudan, where the, the, this famine was happening, mm -hmm. and I offered to go with them because I thought it was the right thing to do. Also, she was a, a good-looking girl. Um, and then I got sent. Tragically, she went to Sudan, and I went to Ethiopia on my own. Um, so you were following there to be with a good-looking girl, and she said, I'm going to a different strife yeah. area. You go to your own? Yeah. Well, we went to a meeting at Oxfam, and they said, what a waste. You two young people going to the same country uh, and sleeping in the same tent in a very hot weather. Um, why don't you go to Ethiopia? Mm -hmm. And I saw, you know, terrible things, things that, mm -hmm. are, you know, are not to be, f I mean, it's basically like going to a concentration camp. When I came back, I thought, I'll try and get my comedian friends to raise some money. And then it turned out to be such an effective way of raising money through laughter. We got a seven-hour show on the T BBC. People would watch it in order to laugh, and then we'd sneak in sad documentaries that asked for money, and then someone came up with this red nose symbol, and we ended up selling millions of red noses that I've never been able to get out of it. When did red nose start? So the red nose, the, what happened is the BBC said, we'll only do this charitable show you want to do if it's representing a day that exists. We don't want it to be the BBC's official charity. Mm -hmm. So we invented Red Nose Day, and then the BBC allowed us to do this seven-hour TV show. Uh, and then we got the luck, the timing was lucky, something extraordinary happened. Yeah, at this point, it's raised over a billion pounds. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know what the conversion is there, but about a billion and a half US dollars yeah. for Famine, poverty relief around the world and in the U.S. Yeah, no, it's actually, um, and we're doing it here in the U.S. now. And Started it's two for, years it's ago? It's for home, yeah, we've done mm -hmm. one. It's for home and abroad. I think both kinds of poverty are equally alarming. It's terribly mm -hmm. important to people to be able to help at home. And what we've, my instinct about life is that if you just open, creak open a door which allows people to actually do good, they, they rush through it. And so in the UK, we have our TV shows. We sell lots of T-shirts and noses and products and crisps and potato chips uh, with the red noses on them. And then people also do fundraising at home. So every school in the country, kids will come in and do a talent show or something like that. The miracle of what can be achieved, particularly in poor countries, never leaves you. So I wrote a note to... J.K. Rowling saying, would you sign some copies of the Harry Potter books? And she wrote back to me and said, so that we can au auction them. She wrote back and said, I'll write you two little pamphlets. And those books have raised us 17 million pounds. Wow. So if you get in a position where you can write one letter, and that letter can raise $25 million, mm -hmm. it's very hard to say, oh, no, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm busy, I'd rather write Bridget Jones 3.